in the majority of patients, it's for when they relapse. So for patients who are unlucky enough to relapse after receiving their initial chemotherapy, the chance of curing that patient with some more standard dose chemotherapy is lower. And so therefore, we look to do a stem cell transplant, which allows us to do a high dose of chemotherapy and hopefully wipe out the patient's lymphoma. Kim had a transplant because she'd relapsed and relapsed after chemotherapy. So patients who relapse after just receiving radiation therapy are often able to be salvaged with just chemotherapy alone. But patients who relapsed after chemotherapy to attempt to cure her Hodgkin's lymphoma, then uh, she received a, a transplant in that situation. In terms of the type of transplant Kim had, she had an autologous transplant. So the Stem cells were collected from her peripheral blood after some manoeuvres to get the stem cells into the the peripheral blood. And then she's able to have high dose chemotherapy and get those stem cells back. When they go back, they just go back in like a blood transfusion, get dripped into a vein and are able to find their own way to the bone marrow and start making normal blood cells again. In Kim's case, the the high-dose chemotherapy went for about six days. The day after that that high-dose chemotherapy finished, then she received her peripheral blood stem cells back and they get reinfused, they get thawed at the bedside in a water bath to rapidly thaw the cells and then get reinfused quite quickly into the patient. After that, the, the stem cells are just reinfused in through a drip or a central line rapidly um, and those cells then find their way from the vein back into the uh, the patient's bone marrow and start making blood cells. From the day the stem cells go back we usually denote that day zero and then we start counting forward from there and it usually takes 11 or 12 days for those stem cells to find their way to the bone marrow and start producing enough cells that we start to see a rise in the patient's blood counts. Usually day 11 or 12 is when the white cell count starts to rise to a point where the patients have got enough white cells to, help, to start fight off infections and, and uh, other complications. For the majority of lymphomas, we would use the patient's stem cells rather than other people's stem cells because that's the procedure that's been shown to have a better outcome. There are some patients with lymphoma who either relapse after having a transplant using their own stem cells or who have certain types of lymphoma where we'd recommend a transplant from somebody else rather than a transplant using their own cells. So the difference between an autologous and an allogeneic transplant is that um, in an autologous transplant the stem cells come from the patient themselves whereas in an allogeneic transplant the stem cells come from somebody else. Now that somebody else can be a related sibling, so it can be a brother or a sister. Um, It can be somebody on an international or national bone marrow transplant register where they're they're a volunteer donor who's agreed to to donate their stem cells. Um, Or these days it can even be from cord blood in some circumstances where the cord blood is collected and banked and then at some later stage becomes available for for, um, a patient to use as part of a stem cell transplant. So all of the ones that aren't from the patient themselves are called allogeneic, apart from the very rare instance where the patient's got an identical twin which is called syngeneic and then the patient themselves is called autologous. A transplant from somebody else has a whole different sphere added to it in that as well as getting somebody else's stem cells to replenish their bone marrow, you're also getting somebody else's immune system. And so the idea being that in some conditions somebody else's immune system may be more likely to be able to detect the cancer or the leukemia or the lymphoma. The downside to getting somebody else's stem cells is that that immune system um, may recognise the patient's body as being foreign and actually attack their body in a condition known as graft versus host disease. For the majority of lymphomas, we would use patient's stem cells rather than other people's stem cells because that's the procedure that's been shown to have a better outcome. The transplant from somebody else has a lot more risk associated with the transplant procedure and so we have to be sure that the outcome is enough to be balanced by the risks of the procedure.